This is Michael Scott Hollish with the Reform Report, and I have a guest with me. I've been working on getting locked in with the elections upon us, and I have Florida District 14 GOP U.S. Congressional Candidate Christine Quinn. Christine was actually our first interview ever conducted on our platform back in 2016 when she ran for the same congressional seat that she is currently running for and against the same failed liberal opponent, the incumbent Congresswoman Kathy Castor. So, Christine, you know, we were uh, discussing previously over the phone that your campaign um, has basically run off of a grassroots effort and you know i've been following your campaign i know that you've been very active and busy including today how do you feel everything has gone up to this point oh yeah but first of all thank you for having me again i didn't realize i was your first yes so there'll be many more to come as your congresswoman but yes definitely the campaign is doing well i think we kind of got off to a rocky start at the beginning because just simply for the fact I got in late because I literally was not going to run again. Uh, as you know, politics is a dirty business at most part. And um, there's a lot of people, uh, rhinos, and a lot of manipulators that decide they want so-and-so to run and they don't want somebody else to do this and that. And it's just ugly. And it costs a lot of money. And I'm a business owner. I am not a fundraiser. And I don't think our congressmen and women should be fundraisers. We should be policy makers. And so uh, just from the last one, I just felt that politics is a tough game. And I, I I'm, had to focus on my business. But with everything that was going on in COVID, when COVID hit, it really changed everything for me. I mean, I think it was an eye-awakening to what's happening in our country how people want to come in and destroy our freedom. And then as things kind of progressed into April, it came down to a deadline of whether I'm going to run or not. I got to mail it in. There's a deadline. So I talked to my kids, and I talked to a few people that said they would fund me. And a lot of people were, yes, this time we'll give you money, whatever you need. And I had commitments of nearly $500,000. So I'm like, okay, I'm in. So the night before... I literally overnighted a check for $10,440, Tallahassee, uh, so that I could get into the election, have my name on the ballot. Right. And the next day, they got it, they posted it. And when we posted it, turns out somebody else decided that they were going to run on that last minute, too, that Paul Elliott. So now I have a primary, which I wasn't counting on. Right. But I do think things happened for a reason. It was a blessing in disguise because it really got me into the game fast and getting my name out there, getting signs, getting advertising, going to the meetings, which were slow getting started because of COVID and kind of loosened up thanks to Ron DeSantis, our governor, who understands the importance of opening our country and getting our businesses back, open up people back to work. So I got in, I had my primary, which really got the ball rolling. And then uh, my daughter came down really to help me with my business because obviously I can't work and do politics. It's just, you got you to be out there. Right. And she turned out, she's like going to be the rock star in all of this. Allison Clay became my a campaign manager. And I'll tell you what, she has knocked it out of the ballpark. I mean, she's like, Mom, you got to get on social media. I mean, I literally do not tweet, right? I don't, I, I, I work. I don't tweet, I don't Facebook, I don't do social media stuff. Now, this is your campaign manager talking. You have to have this. Boy, I'll tell you what, she got us on Twitter. I have 54 followers. After Allison got it going, we're up to almost 13,000. And uh, that's pretty good to that fast. And going, so you can follow us on Twitter at the little sign at Elect Quinn. And then our um, Instagram is Vote Quinn 2020. And she got the Facebook going, she got the website, she rebuilt it, had her person do it. It's just fabulous. And then she's like, everywhere you go, take pictures, take pictures. We need to have where she's at, what you're doing. And boy, she really got it going. So we kind of got to a slow start. Things started coming together. But um, then these, whoever they are out there, I think we have some names I'm not going to mention. 
I didn't give credence to it, really blocked my funding. So right. Uh, right. I had some people that had committed, and uh, they called up to the RNC, and the RNC says, no, that's a D33, she can't win. And they called me back, and they said, what do you mean it's a D33? And I said, this is not a D. If you look at Cooks, which is the political, go to cooks.com, and you can see what the races look like. And um, this guy put out an article saying it was a D33, so I called him out on it. And uh, he called me back. He was just rude. We got an argument. I hung up. So he texted me, and this is his response. No offense, Ms. Quinn. The district won't elect a Republican. It's not a thought I have. It's a fact. It's not about you. In fact, it's the district. It's a D33 at very best. This isn't an isolated opinion. It's actual universal consensus. When you give a challenge in a seat like Ms. Castor's, you encourage her to run a campaign and increase turnout of her very liberal district. That hurts people like Taki Toledo, Sandy Merman, and Sheriff Chronister. I'll give you a call when I can. Thank you again for reaching out. That's because I hung up on him because he's wrong. That that and was so that was said, the actual message to you. That 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 was their wording to you. That that's unbelievable. That was that was the actual message from him on a text. And um, I mean, it was Anthony Pettacini, and he owns a consulting company. And today, a big article came out about him and how he does his consulting and how he. Uh, funnels money through PACs to different, and uh, decides what candidates they're going to support, what candidates they're not, what candidates they're going to throw under the bus. See, I'm a public servant. I'm doing this for the posterity of America. For right. America's freedom. This isn't a game. This is real life in real time for real people. Well, going back, you know, just vaguely what you and I uh, talked about on the phone the other day, you know, it, it's this, you know, this good old boy network. And, and, and it's very yeah. unfortunate because this is the dirty politics that Trump is trying to drain in D.C. And it's and it's reaching out into state politics, local politics, especially for this guy to, you know, have the, you know, what what he does. So he could run an exploratory team and to get the data to figure out how to go about defeating Kathy Kasser, but instead he... Uh, you know, chooses to avoid it because, again, like I said, it's like a good, bo- good old boy network. And it's uh, pretty disgusting, actually. It they- really is because, you know, what? it hurts the American people. This is about the American people. This isn't a political game. But you're right. It is what Trump's trying to drain the swamp. This is what he's talking about. And this is why they don't like him because he calls them out. Right. And he doesn't care. He's about business and about America and about freedom. Right. And that's exactly what I'm about. Business, America, freedom. D- despite that, we were in a clean campaign. We've been out there. We're on the radio. We're on uh, TV. We've got TV commercials. We've got thousands and thousands of, you know, 25,000 pieces of literature in the last 10 days just went out. We've mailed out 51,000 postcards to MTAs and undecided voters that have not voted yet last year. Week, so they got him. They got him the day of uh, the Saturday before early voting started on Sunday. So we've had radio. We've had all kinds of stuff. We've knocked on this week alone. We knocked on six thousand doors. Today we knocked on a thousand doors. And people are still out there. So we're on the street. We're talking to the people. I got endorsed by the Cubans for America, the Latinos for America, uh, the Italians for America, the Hindus for America. The, you know, everybody, every pro-life, 911, the, um, I have an AQ rating with the NRA. I mean, the list goes on. I got endorsed by 40 different groups here in, in um, Hillsborough County. She did. She got endorsed by the Black Caucus. Of course. Well, what is she doing for the black community? Nothing. Right. And when I go knock on the doors, I ask them, what has Kathy Castor done for you lately? They will say nothing. They will even admit it, but you know the worst part of that is? Shame on Kathy, because her family has been here for years, 50 years at least, right? Right. And they've been on county commissioner. They've been city council. They should have put an infrastructure in, in Hillsborough County 50 years ago, or at minimum 25 years ago, for a drainage. Because we know every year it's going to rain. 
the right. racer. Every year we get hurricane threats, but every year rain. South Tampa, and yet yeah, every year floods. We, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we don't have any drainage, right? R- right. So we don't have any, there's no water, there's nowhere for the water to go. So what does it do? It floods into the sewer system, overflows the sewer system, and dumps a raw sewage right into Tampa Bay. And yet she goes out there and boasts about her environment, and she's all about the environment and global warming. The, the and Green New Deal, and, right. And do something about it here, right here in Tampa Bay. But they should have had an infrastructure in the place for drainage for the water, for floods. Right. You know, as your congresswoman, I'm going to go to cut taxes, reduce taxes. We're overtaxed, as it is in America, and um, we don't get the services. I always feel I like we, the whole country now is uh, taxation without representation. They tax us to death, but they're not representing our best interests. Absolutely. She's up there to protect us from taxes, to protect our Social Security, to protect Medicaid for our seniors. We, there are so many other things, and then all she ever, ever talks about is the environment, global warming, global change. Oh, we better. And then on October 20th of this year, she actually did co sign on with the bill to stop the drilling, and uh, that's going to kill jobs. It's going to kill our oil industry. And I don't know about you, I kind of like getting gas for $2.15 a gallon right now. She's going to kill those jobs. I, I just don't think that. People, they look at these things, they sound good, but it's ineffective. Right. It's literally ineffective. Well, and it's, and it's, and it's the, the irony of it is you have these people, you know, up in Washington that are, you know, the, these neo-Marxists that are pushing this Green New Deal. And all it is, is, is a masking policy to hide all sorts of other policies within this massive yeah. umbrella, yeah. you know, umbrella of a plan. But as they're perpetuating this propaganda you know i saw a video the other day uh it was shot in ghana the country ghana and it was a whole bunch of i mean it was just a river of garbage that was flowing to the ocean and it's like you know when there is a lack of oversight and regulation on some of these other countries it's like they they say oh well we got to lead by example well we are leading by example nobody does it better than america nobody and that's why it's so important. I'm on 400% with Trump and this China deal and getting our manufacturing plants back to America, bringing this job back here, period. And because we are going to do better, we do care about the environment, and we will make sure we dispose. But it's not global changing. These are called pollution. We don't want pollutants going into our rivers and our byways and on our highways and into our oceans. So that's what we have to do a better job. Right. Absolutely. Um, of making sure that that has anything to do with global warming, global changing. Those are all just lies, the fear mongering. But you know what's really interesting? If people want to do a little bit of homework, uh, go Google the Times Magazine, 1980, when it says, uh, we will make a change now. We will be, it's going to be. fear-mongering i mean when you get you know you know these individuals like aoc that come out and actually have the audacity to say you know if things don't change within eight years we're all going to be dead i mean it's so dramatic it's so over the top it's ridiculous and the sad part is is that people actually fall for that they actually believe it you know they're blaming everything anything on nature they they put into this propaganda uh, you know, with with hurricanes, with anything. I mean, even with the with the brush fires that they had out in California, those they've you know they tied to arson. You know, or you know whether yeah, intentional exactly. or unintentional. And you know, and going back to your campaign, you know, for Kathy Castor, there is no doubt that she is going to tow, you know, the popular party line. And if Biden gets right. elected, she's going to stand right behind him. The puss push for mass shutdowns with this COVID ordeal, yep, yep. which is going to kill our local small businesses that are already struggling and many that have that yep. won't recover from the previous shutdown. And, and that's exactly why, because 
you know, I, I'm fighting for my business. I'm fighting for my life. But me fighting for my business as a manufacturer in America is advocating for your business. Right. So I, I do have a stake in the game of making sure that I get to Congress and I can make, we stop some of these regulations and the bureaucracy that red tape and killing small businesses. Get our businesses open, not shut them down. We need to get them all open in full capacity. Right. Hey, um, Michael, these guys are coming to get me right now. No, that's okay. That's okay. I, I hate to say we're, we're going back out to walk. So what we're working on today is we are we walked a thousand homes this morning. Uh, from 9 to 11.45. And now we are going to head out to all the new polling sites, get our signs up. And um, tomorrow is election day, so I'm going to go visit some polls. And then we're just going to travel around. But um, you, everyone can follow me at win-quinn.com or go to the symbol at elect Quinn for Twitter. Go on, post uh, us on Twitter. We'll, we'll post where we're at. And then tomorrow night, uh, victory night and um boy it'll be exciting give me a call when you hear that i want i'll pick up the phone for you i absolutely will and i'll make sure to also get all of your social media uh links and i'll get them posted on on the interview description box okay, at the bottom great. so that way people can uh be directed to that and right. make sure they have it right get out there and vote listen to this get out and vote this truly comes down to freedom for communism and uh just remember Venezuela in 2002, the PCB got involved in Venezuela, and they said it will be a slow and gradual transition to socialism. By 2012, they got Mandura in there as their president. By 2018, socialist countries shut down, economy has gone to the toilet, and here we go. That was only six years. Absolutely. And if you look at Cuba, 1959. Castro gets in front of the Catholic Church and makes all these great promises. Uh, by 1965, boom, communist country, take their land. And Australia, they're already putting people in, like, FEMA camp. They're putting them in camp that they refuse to take a test for COVID. They are quarantined and put into a concentration camp right now, two days, for 14 days, and if they don't take it again in 14 days, or another 14 days until they force all these people to take it. That's in Austria. Uh, or Australia. Australia. Sorry. Right, right. So don't think it can't happen here, people. Don't think it can't happen. This is a one world agenda. There's a bigger thing going on. Get out and vote for Trump. I don't care if you don't like his tweets or what he says. Look at what that man has done. You can Google the top 10 things he said. Promises made, promises kept. 100%. Get out and vote for Trump. Get out and vote for Christine Quinn. Go red all the way to the bottom to Karen Cox for the Water District. We need Republicans in office. Period. Get out there, vote, and God bless America. Absolutely. If you are in District 14, 100% vote for Christine Quinn and absolutely vote Trump 2020 because the Democrats are most certainly going to pack the court. If they uh, take yeah. con uh, a high control in the Senate and they get Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in the White House, there is no doubt. All right, Christine, no I won't hold you up any longer. I will touch base with you tomorrow. Uh, good luck out okay. there today. Talk to you soon. We need a miracle. We've got God on our side. Let's do this. Absolutely. Okay. I'll talk to okay. you soon. Bye. -bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.